This graphics card has Intel's first dedicated GPU, the i740. It launched in February 1998 and the market was extremely competitive with GPUs from 3DFX, Nvidia, ATI, Matrox and others. In this video the Intel 740 goes against two GPUs from Nvidia. We have the River 128 which launched in August 1997 and the River TNT which launched in June of 1998. In the background we have incoming running at the 1024x768 resolution on the Intel 740 GPU. And this is quite impressive because for example the 3DFX Voodoo, the Voodoo 2 but also the River 128 cannot run such a high resolution. They simply do not have enough video memory which was quite expensive at the time. Now the reason this is possible with Intel's GPU is not because it has a lot of video memory, quite the opposite. It works because it uses the AGP interface to access the RAM on the motherboard and use this memory for 3D graphics. Intel was pushing the AGP interface and the chipsets, so this was a really interesting technology. But how does it perform? Memory directly on the GPU can be quite a lot faster, so let's put together a retro gaming PC and compare these three graphics cards. We have a slot 1 motherboard from a Open with the famous Intel 440BX chipset. An Intel Pentium 3 running at 1 GHz. 256 MB of SD RAM which will run at 100 MHz configured with CL2 timings. For storage we have a 2TB SATA hard drive from Samsung. I used Seagate C tool to limit the capacity to 32GB because the motherboard BIOS doesn't support drives of this capacity and we're using a SATA to IDE adapter. To boot from a Windows 98 SE floppy disk, partition and format the hard drive and make it bootable, we're using the GoTech USB floppy emulator. Very useful. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend you get one. We also need some sound, so we're using a Sound Blaster Live 5.1 with the model number SB0100. The power supply is from Thermaltek with 600 watts and it is retro friendly with Molex and floppy connectors. We also have a power button to turn on the computer and a PC speaker to hear the postcode. I'm using this nifty USB adapter from Ugreen. This lets me attach the hard drive to a modern computer and then copy across the Windows 98 setup files, all the drivers, all the games and all the benchmarks. After installing Windows 98 SE, we are installing the Intel chipset drivers and next are the graphics drivers. We have version P40. These are the latest drivers from June of 1999. If it has a BIOS, we will flash it. Well, at least I tried. The BIOS on the video card is version 220. The latest BIOS you can get is version 239. Unfortunately, the BIOS tool does not support the chip on this graphics card. But if you are aware of a tool that we can use instead, please let me know in the comments. And finally, we need some drivers for the sound card. We're using the ODG2 drivers. I've done a video on this. Have a look in the description. For the River 128, we're using driver version of 3.37 from March 1999. And for the River TNT, we've got 3.68 from December 1999. The drivers for the Intel 740 are quite basic, not too many options. Specifically, we're missing options to toggle VSync. I tried Power Strip and I also tried uh, River Tuner, but no luck. This means in all the benchmarks, VSync is enabled, so keep that in mind when comparing the performance. Here we have GL Quake and on the River 128 VSync is disabled so the Intel 740 is actually doing quite well and uh, yeah the River 128 cannot run 1024 by 768 because it doesn't have enough video memory. So this is actually quite a decent showing from the Intel 740. 
Incoming really surprised me. The Intel 740 clearly outperforms the River 128 uh, at 640 by 480 quite substantially. We can see a faster drop off as the resolution increases. Maybe this has to do with the memory bandwidth going through the AGP interface and accessing the RAM on the main board. And once again, we can see only the Intel 740 is able to run this game at 1024 by 768. And here we have Xpendable and we can see a similar picture. The Intel 740, clearly the faster card, losing performance faster as we crank up the resolution. And again, the only video card here that runs at 1024 by 768. Also note that the Intel 740 can only render 3D in 16-bit colors. So when the Intel 740 launched in February of 1998, it wasn't such a bad card. The performance was decent and because it didn't need too much onboard uh, memory because it used the system RAM of the computer, it also was quite competitively priced. But especially Nvidia launched new GPUs at a really fast pace. Come June 1998, it launched a River TNT, and here you can see the benchmarks in GL Quack. The card is much faster. It supported 32-bit rendering in 3D games. All the results, however, in this video are in 16-bit rendering. And it also had more VRAM, so now it could run games at 1024 by 768 as well. And we can see the same in incoming. Look at that, the TNT clearly faster. In most results, it is more than twice as fast compared to the Intel 74 and compared to the River 128. What a performance improvement. And now we're gonna try a few games just to get some experience with compatibility and performance uh, of this card. First up, we have Tomb Raider 2 running at 1024 by 768 and it seems to run fine. It doesn't hit the 30 FPS, which is the uh, limit of the engine in this game. And we can also see that between textures, we can see some white seams shining through. So there's a little bit of a driver issue going on in this game. Quake 2, I could not get to work. It kept uh, reverting back to the software render instead of using the hardware accelerated OpenGL option. Screamer 4x4 also didn't work. It kept crashing and I tried the game with the OpenGL as well as with the direct 3D version. Return to Castle Wolfenstein surprised me. It runs at 1024 by 768. Performance is quite poor, but it is still quite impressive to see this game run on the Intel 740. Here we have Rune. This game works, but for some reason it runs in window mode and I wasn't able to make it go full screen. So here we have the game running at 800 by 600. And yeah, there are severe graphic glitches with textures missing. So uh, this game does not work well on this GPU. This is Blood 2, 1024 by 768. Seems to run quite well. Again, we're not getting 60 FPS on this card, but it seems to run fine and I couldn't detect any graphic glitches with this one. Here we have Serious Sam and I tried the game first at 1024 by 768. Performance is quite lackluster, so here we have it running at 640 by 480. It runs a lot better, but of course it doesn't look that nice with huge pixels and uh, in the technology area, we can yeah, see some graphic glitches going on as well. And here we have Quake 3, once again running at 1024 by 768. This is the built-in time demo. The performance is quite poor, but it seems to render correctly. And the game runs at 16-bit colors and doesn't seem too bad, to be honest. My research gave me a few hints that the successor to the Intel 740, uh, some of the DNA ended up in the Intel 810 and 815 chipset with integrated graphics and that you can yeah, try those drivers. And I did, I forced them through device manager. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me. So guys, what is the verdict? Well, the Intel 740 GPU 
definitely holds an interesting spot in the GPU history. It was Intel's first GPU, so to speak, and it did surprise me. I expected worse, to be honest. Um, more driver issues, and I expected a lot worse performance. And um, yeah, so I was positively surprised using the AGP interface to use the system memory for uh, VRAM. Yeah, um, it, it, it seems to work fine. But what we also saw was uh, as new video cards, new GPUs uh, launched to the market, the gap widened and uh, the Intel GPUs couldn't keep up. We also saw some driver issues. Firstly, you can't toggle VSync, which makes benchmarking not as reliable. And in quite a few games, we saw graphics glitches and errors. Um, so yeah, it's a mixed bag. And I'm really curious, how will Intel's uh, upcoming GPU fare? Will it be similar with... Uh, half decent performance and more a value proposition and maybe there are some driver issues as well so yeah i'm really curious so this is probably not a gpu i recommend you guys to uh, spend top dollars it's really a collector's item uh, to have a piece of history in your hands in terms of buying this card for gaming i don't think it's of interest at all it doesn't have any uh, proprietary API is going for it either so you're much better off getting something cheap like a River TNT 2 M64 that's a excellent candidate for games from this era that shouldn't cost you too much and that's it for this video I will put all the resources uh, to help you put a similar project together down below in the video description and as always, let me know what do you think of the Intel 740 if you were alive and kicking around 1998 uh, and you were into PC gaming. What sort of video card, what sort of machine did you have and what is your prediction about Intel's upcoming dedicated GPU? Will it be competitive against AMD and NVIDIA? And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below. Share the video with your friend. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And I shall see you soon with another one.